Well, today marks uh, day two of the Black Business Summit taking place in Kempton Park. Members of the business community, business associations and professionals have gathered on a variety of issues affecting the country's economy and businesses. The annual summit is themed 20 years of broad-based economic empowerment, accelerating implementation, creating jobs and growing the economy. The day will see Energy Minister Gwede Mantash and Electricity Minister Jose Enzo Ramokhupa giving the keynote address. The delegates are also tracking the efficiency of the country's broad-based black economic empowerment policies that have come under sharp focus at the two-day Black Business Summit. Let's now dip in for the latest on the summit to understand that the Minister of Mineral Resources, Gwede Mantash, is currently on the podium. One way or the other, whether it comes through the NGOs or what, to attack the NC, it will be funded, foreign funding will be available for that. Because uh, the West wants us to be encycled. When you are encycled, you don't think you are a conveyor belt of other people's ideas. That's what developed economies want. They want us to be encycled and be just conveyor belt of their ideas. Uh, please sign this agreement. And BBC can be more vocal and more visible. Uh, that's my submission. Uh, we don't see much of it. And uh, the Maroka tried a little bit, uh, whoa, 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 lone voice, whoa, whoa, whoa. lone voice. BBC is a huge organization. It must participate in the debate forcefully it must have a presence, it must be visible, it must be aggressive. Because if we don't, there is no vacuum in ideas. Contest of ideas is always contested by everybody. Now, for instance, the development of resources and energy has, through independent power producer, pro uh, procured a total of 7,786 7 megawatts via risk mitigation program between the four, five, and six. Now, a total of 2,130 of these megawatts are connected to the grid already, whereas a total of 150 megawatts under RMI PPPP and 784 megawatts under between the five are envisaged to be operational between November 2023 and August 2024. So there are more megawatts going there. Uh, I'm not discouraging anybody. I'm encouraging people to invest on renewables, to invest uh, in renewables, participate in finance. On, but lobbies for renewables must stop telling people that that's a solution. You will not resolve load shedding through renewables. You are not going to do it. And we must all accept that and understand it, that the renewables must be complemented by base load energy supply. If they are not partnered, then we're heading for a disaster. Now, whilst projects to 1,000 megawatts under bid window 6 have been allocated, we couldn't allocate 3,200 megawatts because of the great capacity which is poor. It, cannot, it couldn't take additional 3,200 from wind farms. Uh, therefore, ESCOM has a responsibility to invest on the grid. Uh, if we don't do that, we're going to run into problems. There's something interesting that is developing where developed economies are beginning to retreat. Sweden, a very, very uh, cutting edge on renewables, because they know we can't depend on renewables 100%. We're changing that policy. Okay, Back to uh, oil and gas, a few of those countries are beginning to say mix is correct. But they do that out of experience and we run away from it in, out of theory. It's not the same. Now, uh, notwithstanding this challenge, the department is working on pouring a further 10,000 megawatt renewables in between the 7 and 8. When we issue the request for proposal, please do apply. Uh, half the time, people don't apply, and then we allocate to bidders who have bidded. 
then they say, yeah, you give this thing to white monopoly capital, you give it to, to uh, foreign companies and so forth. Yes, because they are applying and you are not applying. So, uh, so what do we do? Please do apply. Burn your fingers. It's an area of investment that is new and test it. Test it, be there. Uh, don't be ashamed of being part of it. Now, um, so, while we are fully committed to achieving energy trilemma balance through trans trans transitioning from high carbon emission to low carbon emission as a sovereign state, we must exercise energy sovereignty and eradicate energy poverty, not only in our country but in the African continent. Energy, half the time we talk about decarbonization and we silent on energy poverty. Energy poverty is lack of access. Number two, it is access, but I'm going to Kala from here, uh, President. I'm going to Kala. That's my home. There, every heart there is connected to the grid. But what difference does it make? Because we use that electricity only for lighting. For space heating and for cooking, we still use wood <laughs> and paraffin. So, that is a sign of energy poverty. You have access, but you are still energy poor. So those are the things that we must debate and try to address. That is a function of tariffs of electricity. It's too costly to use electricity for space heating and cooking. So let's deal with energy poverty equal as we deal with decarbonization. In an energy summit in Cape Town, Chad, a country in Africa said to us, yeah, I hear all of you talk about decarbonization. What do we decarbonize when only 10, 12 percent of our people have access to electricity? To us, decarbonization is not a priority. Our priority is that people must access electricity. We have only 12 percent of the population accessing electricity. That is a widespread scenario for the continent. And as South Africa, let's not be selfish. Let's pay attention to the continent and the needs of the continent. And the current matter is that whereas developed nations have turned their focus on reconfiguring their energy system to be supported by a clean energy system for the transition, African continent is still grappling with achieving universal access to electricity. We are not the same. Therefore, we cannot work on the basis of program develop in the developed north. That's why, Dr. Parks, I'm saying, this concept of just energy transition is a foreign concept for us. <laughs> uh, we pretend to be in developed economies. We are not. We are a developing economy. We are in a poor continent. And, and if we talk about just energy transition, it must be in our own terms. And it must address our own need and our own problem. Therefore, there is no doubt that we are faced with tough and complex policy choices to address energy poverty while heeding the clarion call to combat adverse climate change, which impacts on health and well-being of the people. Now, however, as a foreign state, our approach cannot be about one against the other. No. But one that is pretty much on the balance between fulfilling our country's socio-economic needs while preserving environment. We just escaped from being uh, look, we grow a quarter to quarter by 0.4%. If we slipped a little bit, we would have been in recession. It can be. We can grow more. And I'm one of the few people in the country who says, if we would exploit gas and oil, we'll turn the economy around and the growth will be faster. Many say, I'm a, a fossil fuel dinosaur. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, fine. <laughs> so these titles are, are nice titles. Fossil fuel dinosaur, okay? Uh, coal fundamentalist, okay? Okay. Polluter of the year. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I ran no power station. Polluters of the year. I left alone. Good. I'm a polluter of the year. How can I? 
I be put up to when I run no post station. So that's it. There's no doubt, therefore, uh, however, that as a, as a result, we cannot be about only decarbonization. We must deal with energy poverty. It's something that Black Business Council must grapple with and give us ideas. Otherwise, um, we're going to be in trouble. Um, we must therefore never allow ourselves to be a conduit of somebody else's ideas. It is therefore important for us to develop an upstream petroleum industry and ensure that new discoveries of get in our country uh, and our neighboring countries find their way to our power plants for the purpose. I don't know if you, you know that Namibia has made four discoveries of oil north of the Orange Base, and bigger part of that oil is in South Africa. But every time we touch that oil, we end up in court in South Africa. Okay. Every time we touch it, you go to court. You touch it, you go to court. Um, but those are court cases that we must fight to the end, because uh, we can't have uh, environmentalists vetoing development. Environment and development must coexist. Developers must develop responsible. Uh, environmentalists must tolerate development. If we don't, we're going to be in trouble. Now, we must repurpose some of these power stations. We want to get gas from Mozambique, okay? But we have a lot of gas in South Africa, including the shale gas in the Karoo, yeah, which we must use. Shale gas in the Karoo is economical. I trust that this summit will help us shape our just transition in a manner that is practical and actionable to sustain economic growth and betterment of human life. We look forward to the outcomes of this summit. Uh, we'll be expecting positive contribution of the BBC to the debate. The debate is raging on. Thank you very much.